So this is kind of an add-on to my previous video about different types of lamps where I took a look at um, different types of high intensity discharge lamps and their spectrum. And in this video I'm going to talk about another kind of lamp which I didn't have in the previous video as well as um, do some kind of experimentation with, um, well, with these different types of lamps. So we'll start with um, on the left there you see I have the um, high pressure mercury lamp which I used in my previous video and today um, the other day I was reading something to the effect where I know that you can use metal halide um, ballasts to drive the mercury vapor lamps but you cannot use the mercury vapor ballasts to drive the metal halide lamps and I was reading to where the reason you can't drive the metal halide ones off a of mercury ballast is because the metal halide lamps have a higher starting voltage than the mercury vapor lamps. So today I'm going to try driving the metal halide lamp off the mercury ballast but I'm going to use a variac to boost the input voltage to the mercury ballast to see if the output voltage will spike high enough to at least start the lamp and then once it's started I'll turn the variac back down to normal operating voltage and we'll see what happens. So I'll start by taking this lamp out. So this is the mercury vapor lamp. This is the metal halide lamp. So you can clearly see there's a large difference in the arc tube in these. Uh, the mercury vapor is mostly clear. And if you look closely, perhaps you can see the mercury condensation on the inside of the arc tube in the middle. It's like a little haze. That's the actual mercury droplets condensed on the inside of the tube. In the metal halide one, you can see the ends are white and then that yellowish whitish mixture in the middle I guess this black stuff too is the combination of the mercury and the metal halide salts so I'll get this set up okay so I've got the um, variac turned up to 120 volts and we'll turn this on and see what happens as you can see, it's not starting right now. So let's boost this up a little bit. And still nothing. All right, so that's up to 140 volts and it's still not starting. So I guess you have to go even higher than that. So even with the, oh, it's kind of doing something there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn that. It's trying to start. It's just not, just not quite there. Now that's the variac all the way up. You definitely see there's a little bit of almost looks like glow discharge in there it's not quite an arc so it looks like it might not start even that's up to 140 volts so probably have to go even higher to get it actually started but so even by driving the input voltage up to 140 volts uh, we still can't get the metal high to start off the mercury ballast it looks like it wants to start but it's not quite there Alright, so even with the without the 140 volts, so won't start off the mercury ballast, so let's go on to our next experiment. So I believe in my previous video I explained the purpose of the ballast. This is a regular um, choke ballast for a fluorescent lamp, and basically all this does is it goes in series with the lamp 
and restricts the current to the lamp so that the lamp doesn't draw too much current and burn itself up. Um, I think I talked about in the, that in my previous video how these lamps have negative resistance. Basically, the more that's not focusing. Basically, the uh, more current you drive through an arc, the less resistance the arc has, and so the more current, current it takes, which leads to a runaway effect of it just taking basically like a, a huge inrush of current and burning a lamp up. So the purpose of the ballast is to limit the current so that the, the lamp can't draw too much and burn itself up. So here, I've simply replaced the ballast with a 60 watt light bulb, incandescent light bulb, which actually draws 60 watts. So the light bulb will act as the ballast to restrict the current to the lamp. And that little, this thing here, is the starter. And what that does is it connects the um, two pins of the bulb together. So how these bulbs work is, in each end, there's two pins here with a filament between them. And the purpose of the starter is it connects this pin on this end and that same pin on the other end together so that when you turn the lamp on, current flows through the ballast, in this case the light bulb, then through this filament, through the starter, down through the other filament, and then out to ground. And that warms the filaments up, and after you know half a second or a second or so, the starter disconnects, and then with both the filaments warm, then the voltage is applied across the bulb and the arc strikes across the bulb. So um, you can actually see the starter glow when it tries to start, so we'll turn off the lights. Hopefully we can see that. As you can see the starter flashes every time it tries to start the bulb. And you can see the when it first starts, I don't know if you noticed or not, the 60 watt bulb glows brighter. Uh, that's when it's flowing through the filaments. The filaments have less resistance than the actual arc. And then when the arc strikes the light, the lamp, the 60 watt lamp dims down. It's it has drawing less current. So basically all that bulb is doing is acting like the ballast and restricting the current. Um, I would imagine you could basically use any kind of resistive load there. Probably even a capacitive dropper would work as well. Just a regular resistor. So that's about all for this one. Um, next I'm going to show you a socks lamp. So this is a lamp that I did not have in my previous video. Um, we'll take a look at the spectrum of this as well. This is a low pressure sodium or sox lamp. Now the bulbs for this are pretty interesting looking. This is the sox lamp bulb. You can see on the inside there you've got some globs of metal. It's actually um, the sodium. Focusing on that. There you go, you can kind of see it there. That's the solid metallic sodium condensed on the inside of the bulb. See, it's quite a, a large glob of that. And this has, um, these are kind of like what the fluorescent filaments look like. They're filaments like this, and then they're coated with um, an oxide to help them give off electrons better. So you can kind of see the, the oxide on there, if it would focus. That white stuff on the filament is the oxide. Um, they use the same type of thing in vacuum tube filaments. Vacuum, yeah, vacuum tube filaments to help them give off electrons as well. I thought it was kind of interesting what they tell you to do with these. Uh, see if you can see that there. Oh, it says disposal. Basically, it tells you to um, put the lamps in a bucket and break them up and then pour water on them, and the water neutralizes the sodium. I thought that was kind of interesting uh, compared to all the fluorescent and murky and metal halide lamps where they tell you you have to take them to a, a specialized disposal place and beware and never break them and anything and this one directs you to break it to dispose of it. So as you can see this has the um, bi-pin base and this just goes in here like this. So the reason why this is sideways is because they have to burn sideways um, if you burn them upright, then if you burn them this way, then all the sodium collects at this end, 
and um, then you get an uneven arc. And if you burn them this way, then all the sodium collects at this end and actually dissolves the seals on the inside of the tube and causes it to leak. So we'll put this in here. It's kind of overloading on the camera. It's actually a nice, to the eye it's a nice um, orange red color. Let's see, where's my glasses? I did not focus in. Yeah, it's not, it's not showing up right on the camera. It's actually a nice, um, red but it's showing up more yellowish on the camera for some reason. Um, these take a while to warm up and as they warm up they slowly get more yellow. So I think I'll pause this and come back when it's warmed up. Alright, it's starting to get a little bit warmer now. You can see it glowing more yellow. Which there was a way to... Oh, there we go. If I can... No. That looks a little bit better there. You can kind of see the arc inside the tube. See what colors we have now. So it looks like we've got mostly yellow with a tiny little bit of blue. So this is just about warmed up now. See, it's much brighter. Not sure if I can just the. There we go. Oops. So, yeah, you can't really tell in there. Um, maybe barely. There was a, a very faint, very faint amount of red and a very faint amount of blue in addition to the yellow. And. The red and the blue are not from the sodium, those are from the, um, the penning mixture. So when you turn the lamp on before the mercury is, or the, the sodium is vaporized, in order to strike the arc, the, the tube is filled with a mixture of neon and argon. And there's a certain type of mixture called a penning mixture, which is especially formulated to have a low striking voltage. So the ballast doesn't have to provide um, that high of a voltage to strike the arc because of the mixture of neon and argon in the tube. So that's the red color initially that we saw was the, the arc through the neon and argon and then as the sodium vaporized it turned yellow. So if you maybe can see any red or blue, I know neon is red, uh, I guess argon must be blue. I'm not 100% sure about argon. I know helium and xenon are white. I know neon is red. So based on this, I'm guessing argon is blue. As you can see, the um, almost all of the light, except for the very, very faint uh, red and blue, is in a single yellow wavelength. So unlike the high pressure sodium, which we saw in the previous video, had um, multiple different colors in it, so it was more orangish, and it wasn't like a sing one single color. This low pressure sodium is basically one single color, that one yellow color. Uh, the one thing I also wanted to mention is this is one of the most um, energy efficient high intensity discharge lamps. Um, I think it's like 190 lumens per watt or something like that. So much more efficient than the metal highlighted mercury vapor and more efficient than the high pressure sodium. So I had another idea of something I could do to try and get a higher voltage on the uh, mercury vapor ballast to make it dry with the metal highlight lamp. So right now I've got, this is a transformer out of a 
about a 60 to 70s TV set. And that's probably about a 350 to 400 watt transformer. Those tube sets use a lot of energy. So I've got the Mercury lamp connected to that. And I measured the secondary on that outputs about 160 volts. And I've got that hooked up to the variac. So when the variac is at 120 volts, that transformer should be putting out about 160 volts, which will be higher than we could achieve last time with the variac alone. And if I turn the variac up, variac up to 140 volts, it should go even higher. So we'll see if that's high enough to start the metal halide bulb, because I got the metal halide bulb in there now. Um, even though the transformer is rated at uh, 350 or 400 watts, and the lamp is only 175 watts, um, the secondary that I've got it connected to probably isn't really rated for that kind of power. Uh, most of the power would be on the 6 volt secondary, which would be for driving the tube filaments. So if this does start, I'm not going to run it for very long, but uh, hopefully it'll work. So I've got my meter hooked up to the um, secondary of the transformer. I'm going to turn it up to, I'm going to turn the variac up until I get about 120 volts on the secondary, which would be 120 volts going into the lamp, and we'll start from there. Okay, we've got zero volts, let's turn this on. So this is unloaded, so it's obviously going to be a bit higher than when I actually turn the lamp on. Is that visible? Yeah. 112. Yeah, so we got 126 now. Uh, let me turn the lights off first. That way you can better better see if the lamp starts. So this has a light, I think. There we go. 27, let's see what happens. Well, it dropped a little bit. All right, let's keep going. I can hear it, but it's not this bulb all the way in. I remember the last time it started, I tried to start. I don't know why it's not doing anything this time. Hey, there we go. Let's turn that down. Ah, there we go. All right, so that answers the question. If you crank the voltage up high enough, you can, in fact, drive a metal halide bulb from a mercury vapor ballast. So I think, I think on the meter that went up to like 180 volts. So that's pretty significant voltage we had to drive into that to get that to start. I thought it would start sooner than that. But it does work. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.